parameters that I can't leave. I am, I, I have to, there's a really good idea over there. I can't, so I can't stop there. It's really crazy. Uh, last week, some of the things that they found out about the recordings, this room, you know how it's bad for me with my hearing? It's really bad for the camera with the camera's audio pickup. When you guys like talk amongst yourselves, when you turn around and say something to him, and he says something to him, it gets picked up. Oh, that's great. It's hearing all like the little conversations. I don't think it's as bad as in some of the other classes, because some of the other classes, there are rows of students, and so I'm sure there are students like sitting right there and it's picking up all of their conversation. Our class is not that big, so um, it's not going to hear all these different conversations going on. However, you know how when I say to you, speak up, because I've got 30 plus years of leading praise and worship on stage with full band speakers and everything else, rather than, you know, the things in your ear where it's, it's, the platform today is totally different than worship and praise when, when I was leading. Uh, my hearing is shot, okay? So when you talk, you've got to really speak up. It's even more important for the camera because they want to know what you're thinking. They want to know what your ideas are and your thoughts are, okay? Let me call real quick, and then we will pray and we'll get started right away. And I didn't mean to rhyme. This is not Dr. Seuss day, is it? Or something? Even when I sit, I gotta sit in a certain area so that the camera picks me up. Fun times. I liked it better when we were incognito on our calls. Casey. Yeah. And you're gonna be exceptional today, right? Bennett. Yeah. And exceptional as always. Will. Here. Always exceptional. Kaylin. Here. Always exceptional, but you didn't bring me a coffee, which I'm really kind of a little bit upset about. Christian. Online. Please online. Is he Lucy. Uh-oh. She Teddy. She Teddy's on. Abby Reeves. Wow, you can just write them all out, so. <laughs> You just mark everybody else out. What's really bad is, I can't. Abby's here. Abby uh, Reeves is in here. Yeah, but Abby Roberts is here. You can mark her out, too. Wow. What's really bad is the people that are home. I don't know how that's going to work out. We have to figure out how we mark attendance for people who are actually there, paying attention. Um, is that live? Because I can't even... I don't know. I can't even I can't even mark them as exceptional. Once they're absent, their conduct is gone. That's not live, is it? It's on. I don't know. They recorded it. It's on. It's not live. I don't think we're zooming. If that's not live. Okay. It's picking up everything that you're asking. All right, so let's open in prayer. Um, yeah, we'll just go ahead and get started. Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for each student here, those that will be watching the video, Lord. I thank you and I lift them up to you. I thank you for your protection over all of us, over our families, Lord God. I just pray for healing over those that are sick. I thank you for comfort for those that are in need of comfort at this time, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity just to, to learn and grow and develop our minds and to uh, just thank you for this opportunity just to be together in a room where we can share our thoughts, Lord. I lift each one up to you. I, I pray, Father God, that you continue to minister to all of us. And I also pray, Lord God, that you would open the, the, the minds and, and the spirits um, heart for everyone that's in the room that that as they're learning about different subjects, they can actually see you woven in, Lord. And I thank you for that, that and I just give you praise for this time, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so, one of my first questions that I have to ask you, 
Are you losing points in your discussions? Are you losing points? Some of you said earlier that you're doing really well. You've got perfect scores. Others of you were saying, I don't know. I got a 90. It's the worst my grades ever have been. My daughter in school hated beads. She thought they were fat and ugly. She, she was like an A student, and it wasn't anything that we were like, you have to be an A student. She just hated beads. Um, so listen, you need to follow the guidelines. Now, I wish, I really, I really hope one of you will email your professor to find out for sure, okay? One, email your professor, if you're not like getting a 100% in this, email your professor and say, hey, could you please make some comments as to why my grade is such and such? Uh, and then also ask them about the, the format. Because, again, if you're looking at the guidelines, discussion posts are 20% of your grade. That's a big percentage of your grade. And again, an original post is due on Thursday. The follow-up post or the reply post is due on Sunday. I read this already, but I'll read it again. You are required to post one original comment or question. That is underlined. And then to participate in discussion, in discussion by posting, this is underlined and the word seven is all capitalized. Seven responses to other posts. The original post is supposed to be at least 400 words and at least 250 words for your response, for each response. Now, will you post a, a, a discussion post? You responded to one post and you got a perfect rate. So that leads me to think that you respond to, there's going to be seven posts, so you have to respond to it at least one of each of those posts. Let's see where that goes, but somebody email your professor and find out for sure. I'll do it this week. So you did you make a note that you're going to do that? I got a note right here. So did you make a note right last week that you were going to do that? Yeah. Okay, so, well, we see where that went. <laughs> okay, so email me as soon as you find out the response. You probably won't get a response today. But as soon as you get a response, email me. Go through GradeLink, email me. I will go into GradeLink and email you guys the response, okay? Last week, we discussed the research paper assignment. Okay, you guys all remember that? Yes, no, maybe so? Okay, and uh, we talked about several different comp topics. What I'd like for you to do today if you are ready to do this, this is not like I was supposed to prepare you or anything else. This is just throwing this out there. What I'd like you to do today is share your topic in the form of your research question. I know you don't have a topic. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else have a topic yet? You, will you have a topic? Do you have a research question that you can formulate? Uh, not a very good research question. I have some research topics okay. underneath the main topic. Okay, what's your main topic? Supreme Court. Say that loud and clear. The Supreme Court. Okay, what key words do you think you're going to use in finding your sources? Um, look for the history. How to become a judge, look at previous judges, um, term length, the functioning of it, when it was founded, that, that kind of stuff. You're going to do a comparison between Supreme Court and lower lower courts? Hmm. I hadn't thought of that. I, that. I would do that. Just recently there, there's a major, major, major thing that was put up to the Supreme Court to make a decision on whether or not um, Flynn's case could be dropped. I think that's, that's, that was presented to the Supreme Court. 
And they handed it down. They said, well, we're not going to discuss that. It's going back to, to the um, lower court. So it's going back to the same judge that made the, made the initial ruling to decide whether or not they're going to drop it. So, Flynn, who, who described the case for me, I'm not familiar with it. You don't know the Flynn case? I'm sure I've heard about it. Flynn, Flynn lied to the FBI or he, he, he lied about several different things and um, was charged, okay? And I think President Trump was pardoning him, okay? Um, it's brought up to the Supreme Court can the case be dismissed? And the Supreme Court said, well, we, we're not making that decision. That's the lower court's decision. So there are some crazy things out there that, that happen between courts. So it would be a good idea to kind of look at you know, who, who makes a final decision, where, who, who gets to say that, okay? Uh, do you have any kind of thesis on where you're going with it? No, I'm just going to look at the history of it, look at how it works, and then we an easy way to bring in the book, because the book talks about the court and that, that this uh, section of government. How long is it? So, to me, can, ten pages. Ten pages. When is it doing again? The fifth week. This is week set, week two. Yes, sir. <laughs> week two. The fifth week is coming up in three weeks. I'm putting pressure on somebody over there. <laughs> I, I was. I was. I was one of those students. I was. I was one of those. I got time. And then it was like, oh, let's cram this. Let's let's do this stuff. Okay, um, anybody else have a topic that you're working on yet? Nobody? Do we have to like, submit a topic? Pardon? Do we have to submit a topic to the professor? No, I don't think so. Okay, yes. Look ahead. I don't look ahead, Abby. Yeah. That's the point. You need to. Read, read what was discussed last week. I don't have last week's lesson in front of me. But last week we talked about um, topics. And we talked about... Uh, how long the paper's supposed to be and everything else. So think about that. Uh, okay. Next week, I'm going to ask you to present your thesis statement in class and share three of the major points you plan to make in your paper. What if I don't have my thesis by then? <laughs> be creative and put it together. Make it work. It's important that you get a head start on this paper. Okay. The papers are, you know how we talked about the discussions being like 20% of the grade? The paper is 25% of the grade. Oh, shoot. That's, that's a lot. That's, that's, they're looking for a lot in that paper. Okay. It's only 10 pages. Once you start typing... That's not a lot. I can do that in a day. We've never done a 10-page paper. I can do it. The most of the data is like four. It's something I'm passionate No, I've done like an eight. Well, not ten. No, it's something I'm like. When do you all do it? And English is one of the most I was classes. Ten pages, are you serious? I've been on a lot of that. Once you start once you start typing, once you get your, your stuff together, you you're gonna you're gonna rock right through it. As long as your topic is substantial enough that you can True. go to the camp focus on one specific thing, like with my Supreme Court. I wouldn't want to do the history for 10 pages. Right. I would want to do the Supreme Court as a whole, maybe, so I can talk about the history, I can talk about how it works, and, and some different aspects of it. Think about also, when you're thinking about the Supreme Court, think about the, the power of the, um, the, the position of the president in submitting names for possible Supreme Court chairs, uh, and, and who that president might be. So that the, where the power of the Supreme Court might lean one way or another. Uh, something else to think about. So you've got a lot of facets to look at, okay? Uh, and don't do what I talked about last week in my elementary school paper. Remember what I talked about? Don't do that. 
Okay, and I actually still have a copy of that. I can find it and bring it in, but don't do that. Okay, so let's see. So remember that. I'm gonna skip a few things here. We talked last week about a field trip that's going to be coming up at the end of the course. The course is gonna end really quickly. We were just talking about it. This is week two, your paper's due week five. It's only three weeks away. The end of the course is gonna come up really fast and then we're gonna be taking this field trip. I don't, last semester or last year was the first time I actually really kind of worked a field trip and I've taught middle school for 40 years. Um, but I, if a band director said, hey, let's do a field trip, I was like, that's cool, I'll go with you. And they planned it all out and I grabbed my kids and we went. Um, but looking at field trips and trying to put them all together and stuff, it's kind of outside of my box of thinking. But I have been trying to find some of these places that we talked about last week online that were open because of COVID-19. And there's nothing available. So I need you to kind of really kind of think on your own, like what would work within what we're talking about and local enough that we can get to. And shoot me an email and say, hey, Mr. Cohen, what about this place? Can we look at this place? Uh, I'll do the research. You don't have to look in to see if it's open or anything else, but I'll do the research on it. And I have looked at so many different places, all of the ones that we went down the list, that were local enough, like all of the places in Atlanta are pretty much closed until further notice. Um, so we need to see what we can do about that. Okay. This week, we're going to be learning how the three branches of the government work and, um, and how they interact and how there's a system of checks and balances, which I think is one of the most amazing parts about our government is uh, the fact that, and I talked a little bit about this last week, I talked about how in the past there were um, some presidents and President Trubuk, President, Vice President, ran from office, got into office, and I thought, this is going to be an amazing government, and then different things happened where it wasn't an amazing government. There are so many ways that there's checks and balances in the government. You've got the House, you've got the Senate, you've got um, you've got your judici judicial branch, you've got the executive branch. You have all these different, the president can't just get in and say, hey guys, we're going to war and let's go. You can't just do that. There's, there's all of these different ways to, I mean, think about it, if there was a president in the office who would, who would push a button, aren't you glad that there has to be communication between the branches? Okay. And there are protections also where Congress can't just say, we're doing this. And one person can't just decide for everybody. So there's all of these differences. So uh, there's this major chart that I've got to put on the board, and I'm not good with writing charts. But I'm going to do this for you anyway. Why? Because that's the kind of nice guy that I want. Yeah. Do this on paper just so that you can kind of follow along with.
and use them. There's no really time limit. Okay. But this is executive. And if I could spell it would be really good. If I could read it, it would be better. Let's say these are the branches of government. Legislative. Judicial. And checks and balances. Legislative branch, judicial branch, checks and balances, the executive branch. All right, so looking at this chart, start asking yourself, what do I know? What do I know about the executive branch? The executive branch is the, the president, the cabinet. What do I know about the executive, executive branch? What do you know about the executive branch, anybody? What do you know? The Checks and balances. Sorry. Yeah, it's my scribble. I should have just like taken that chart and projected it on the board. But then if I took it off to show the finish, then I would try to get the chart back up there. It would be like, well, I'm going to read it and then move it. Okay, so. What do you know about the executive branch, anybody? What do you want to know about? It's led by the president. Say that again. It is led by the president. Led by the president, okay. He's kind of in charge. So he's the man, he's the guy in charge. Okay. Who who chooses who chooses the uh, the cabinet members? President. The president chooses his cabinet leaders, right? Okay, so that's something that you know, right? So we know that there's cabinet leaders. Okay, what do you want to know about the executive branch? What do you want to know? How much power they have, maybe? Wouldn't that be something good to know? How much power does the president have? How much power does the vice president have? I think we've seen more out of this vice president than we've seen out of a lot of past vice presidents. He's more. He's more in the news as far as doing things, not just in the news as far as going and cutting ribbons or going someplace where the pres president can't be here, so I'm here. He's like, I'm here because I care about the people. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so what do you want to know? What do they do? That's a good one. Okay. And then we, we haven't really learned anything yet, so we're going to come back to that when, when we see it, after we see the videos. Okay? What do you know about the House, the, le the legislative branch? What is the legislative branch? Can you? There's, there's two of them. It's the House and the Senate. Yeah. So you know that there's a House and there's a Senate. Aren't those okay. two? Contained under the umbrella of Congress, the House and the Senate, aren't they the two? That's a good question. I think so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. So is, does Congress have its own members? And then you have the members of the House? And the no, Congress. you have the House and the Senate. And that's, that's it, yeah. So, so it has, so uh, like if the, if anybody proposes a bill to be able to become a law, it has to be proposed by somebody in the Senate. And then if it is voted upon and it's majority vote, it's sent to the House. And if it's a majority vote in the House that is for it, then it becomes, then it has to have the, the President's sign of approval on it, and then it becomes law. So it's the same thing with the President. The President has to have somebody in the Senate. Who should speak up? The, the, the President even has to have somebody in the Senate to propose a bill that they want to become law. Yeah, the President can't just say, let's make this a law. Any bill, I know any bill that uh, does in, that has anything to do with uh, taxes or revenue of any kind, it is started in the House. It first goes to the House and then the Senate. And I don't know why. But. That's news to me, so that's, I and just the Senate. Just the, the Vice President is the 
president of the Senate. What is that little book you're looking at? Are you kidding me, Ricky? He's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, all that. I was like, where are they getting all this information from? There's no way you're the encyclopedia. Wait a minute. Like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is the, the thing I'm just saying. You just got off camera. You just look at the blue eyes. They got to come running in. Get back to the blue. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Hey, can you can you can you this see that on camera? I've got to show you. So this like this really 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 tiny video. Oh my gosh! It's like this really really tiny, tiny book, and it says the Constitution of the United States of America. This is really cool. Y'all need to get this. Where'd you get it? This is like uh, the best. I was, it, I was given to. I was given it by a uh, lawyer down in South Georgia. You cheated. Well, all they just said was like. Okay. Really All right. Do me a favor. Take that address and email that address to everybody. Or email it to me and I'll email it to everybody. Okay, good guys. So you can get that. That's really cool to have. It. So it's like... It's got the declaration. Uh, and it's it's do all that. That's, that's cool. Okay, so what do you know about the judicial branch? Supreme Court. Okay, it's the Supreme Court. What else? Does There's another part of the court system that, that kind of makes up just judicial branch. <laughs> I took his book. You took his book? I have his book, so you can't cheat anymore. Write the address down. <laughs> you need that. That's really important to have. Okay? There's the Court of Appeals, or the Appellate Court, okay, it's A P P E L L A T E. Yep, Appellate, appellate Court, okay. So, what do you know about the Supreme Court? What do you want to know about all of this? How it works. I don't think you're going to find that in here. People are going to think yeah, I mean, that. It keeps you quiet, just keep looking. Case, in, case in, if you want to get to this section, go to the first, the first part, uh, part of the concept. Okay. So, guys, how, how pay attention. Selected? How they selected? Yeah. Okay. What's the criteria for selecting them? That's really good. How do they, how, do they, can they retire? Or do they just like stay there until like, I don't know, they, can they retire? I think they stay. Sometimes I like to know. Are they there forever? Don't they stay there until. Can they retire? Until they stay, do they have the right to retire? retire? What? Now let's talk about we have a license. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like wait, look, congratulations, you're in the Supreme Court. And can never leave. Indefinitely. It's like a <laughs> Indefinitely. Don't talk about California. Okay. So learn, I learned some stuff already listening to the book. This book. Checks and balances. Okay. What do you want to know about checks and balances? What do you want to know? We really don't know much about checks and balances. What do you want to know about checks and balances? I honestly just want to know what it is, because I don't yeah. know what it is. What is it? What? So it's a book. What are our checks and what are our checks and balances? Uh, well, uh, there's checks and balances, each brain says checks and balances. You guys remember Schoolhouse Rock? Yes. Yeah, I've seen it. Did you ever did you watch Schoolhouse Rock? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> they actually did a video on checks and balances from Schoolhouse Rock. So we're going to get a chance to watch this Schoolhouse Rock video on checks and balances. Okay? So it's called the Three Brain Government Video. It talks about the three branches of government.
I need another desk. That's out of my zone, that's not good. Okay, this is a three ring government. This is the first one. This should be like full screen. Lights on, please. Circus, gonna have a three-ring 
Okay, so with the three, the three ring circus. All right, so what did you get from that as far as this, the government is concerned? What, is it like a cloud in the politics? Like, how did that, they get things done? What was, what was one of the biggest things that they showed in that video? How many people were in the first room? One. One, right? How many people were in the second room? Uh, A lot, was, okay? And in that lot... Wait, which one is the first room? The president. Executive. 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 In, in the video, it's just like the president, okay? But there were a lot of people in that second branch, or the second ring, which is the legislative branch. And in that branch, you've got, oh my gosh. In that branch, you have, <laughs> kind of frightening to be outside the blue. In that branch, you have um, people who disagree. And so, this group is saying, hey, we have to do this. This other group is saying, no, we have to do it this way. When they all finally come to a consensus and say, let's do this, the president still has the power to look at it and say, no, I'm not doing it, and he vetoes. So they're all saying, yes, let's do it. He says, veto. What happened in that third ring, the third range, the Supreme Court? If a law is passed by, by Congress and the president, it can be deemed unconstitutional by, and part or all of it can be void. Supreme Court can look at it and say, well, you guys can all agree on that. That's, that's your business, but let's look at it constitutionally. How does it fit into the Constitution? Or does it fit? And so then they have to look at it a third way. So we recently we talked about climate change. Do you know how long we've been talking about climate change? Climate change has been around a long time. But there's all conflicting thoughts on it. There's all, there can't be, there's not been a consensus on what to do. One of the reasons why um, they, they look at uh, vehicle exhaust and what is that doing to the climate they look at uh, offshore drilling and what is that doing to the climate because it's doing something so they look at all these different things and it takes years of study it takes years of research it takes years to get something that will be constitutional to make it work so those are some things to think about is it effective at stopping the reach or the outreach of power? Checks and balances. What do you think? After looking at that video and all, all that's going on. I know, it's, you, 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 nice. you were looking at the video on the level of, it's a circus. But the video is explaining the three different branches and kind of showing you how 
we don't have just a president who is just ruling and saying, this is the way it is. We have Congress saying, uh, no, Mr. President, you can't just do that. We've got this. And you've got the, the courts, the judicial branch saying, uh, you might want to do it that way, but it's not within our Constitution. So, the, the checks and balances, is it effective? Will it control any one group's power? What do you think? I think so, for the most part. It, it helps? I think it's... Okay. Any other thoughts? I think it's pretty successful. It's kind of been successful, hasn't it? Okay. Now, based on what we saw, think about this. Is it fair and reliable, the whole idea of checks and balances? Definitely. It, it works. Well, I would say about as close to fair as you could get. I mean, I, I can't think of any other way that it could get more Wait, fair. So what is checks and balances? Well, so like... The executive, the president, the president can't just make law. He has to make a right bill. Mm -hmm. And for it to become law, it has to go to the Congress. And it has to go through the Senate and the House. It has to go through two bodies. And if it makes it through, and they, but first it has to be um, presented by one of the Congress members. He can't present it. So he's got to have somebody in Congress that presents bills for him. And then if it passes both houses or both parts of the Senate and the House, then it goes back to him and he has to sign it and that, then it becomes law. But if it's not constitutional, then the judiciary, ju judicial court, whatever, it um, can declare it unconstitutional and pretty much just, you know, get rid of it. So it's not, Abby, it's not a group of people. Oh, like it's not an actual checks and balances is not a group of people. Mm -hmm. Checks and balances is just the fact that there are three groups of government instead of like a monarchy or something like that. Instead of making one mm -hmm. person, they right. can just go. Well, so it's, it's, it's like all three. It's just the way it's designed. Right. It's, it's designed design of checks. All balances. of this. This is designed to have checks and balances in decision making. It's made. It's, made, it's just made balanced so one branch doesn't have more power than the other. It's just, it's just all the balances to make sure they're all kind of equal. One of the things that, uh, in, in, has anybody ever seen the movie or the musical um, Camelot? Has anybody ever hear of the musical Camelot? You've heard of it? No. Some of you are nodding yes, but most of you are saying no. Camelot, um, you ever hear of King Arthur and his round table? King Arthur had a round table. The idea was, we're all the same. He brought his knights to the round table, and he sat in the round table. He didn't sit above the round table, saying, I'm king, you guys discuss it, and let me know what you're thinking, because I'm gonna make a decision. He sat in the round table as part of the round table discussion, and they talked about it how to rule the country, what would work, what wouldn't work, go to war, not go to war, all those things. Okay. One of the biggest scenes or greatest scenes that I remember from that uh, movie, and I don't, um, I, I don't support the whole theme of that storyline, the movie. It has to do with, um, King Arthur has a wife. She actually falls in love with one of the knights. Okay, and, and there's all of that underlying thing. But King Arthur in one scene goes out on a balcony and he wants to fight against the knight for his wife. He's like, it's, it's not right. You know, she's my wife. And he makes a statement, he's like, I demand a king's ransom or, or revenge. And then 
he talks himself out of it by saying, but wait a minute, I'm not just a man, I'm, I'm the king. I can't make decisions based on what I want. I'm the king. And I look at politics that way where somebody can run as a Republican, they can run as an independent, they can run as a Democrat, and they can have their support from each of those areas. But once they become, they become president, they're everybody's president. That's what last week, remember I told you last week, one of the biggest things that we need to do, whether you like our president, don't like our president, is go back to the Bible. It says, vote for your rulers, vote for your, uh, pray for your rulers, pray for your leaders. Okay? Once they are our leaders, we need to pray for them because they're making decisions or are supposed to be making decisions on our behalf. So we have to pray for their wisdom. Pray that they seek godly counsel. And that's what King Arthur was like relating. is like, I'm no longer just a guy. I'm, I'm a king. I'm, I, I'm responsible for everybody. I can't just make a decision on what I want to do. I've got to make a decision on what is good for everybody. And, and that's really, really important. Um, going from there into this, one of the biggest responsibilities given to the president is he's allowed to make an executive decision. He's allowed to uh, make an executive order. And it's, it's written in the Constitution. It's kind of in there. And it's one of those things that, that I, I guess you become president and then somebody sitting next to you says, do you know, manager president, you can actually make this order. And it's, it's like, wait a minute. There's that little bit of power in there. Okay? It's not something that a president just kind of throws around. I'm going to make an executive order from now on this or from now on that. This is in like extreme situations. What can the president do? Um, I'm going to look at these situations that happened. Okay? And we're going to talk a little bit about them. The confiscation of is that a word, confiscation? Yeah, it was confiscated. The confiscation of gold. Never hear of that? Me neither. In like 1913, the Federal Reserve Act said the government has to have a certain amount of gold to print paper money. I mean, that just makes sense, doesn't it? Like, the government can't just like print money and not have anything going in support of that money. It, money has to have some value, and the value of that money is where it came from, what's supporting it. In a bank, banks have federal insurance for your money. So if you put your money in a bank, your money is covered by the insurance and that, that secures your money. The government prints money. But in 1913, they said, you need to have gold on hand in order to print money. So, in order to do that, the, uh, by 1933, there was the Great Depression, we were in the Depression, okay? And President Franklin Roosevelt said, we need to increase the government's cash on hand. 
That makes sense. Okay? The, the whole economy is crashing. We need to, the government has to be able to help. So how do we help? So in order to do that, they, he did an executive order. The executive order was to compel American citizens to trade in their gold for cash. So if you were, if you were hoarding gold, if you were cash poor, but you had a lot of gold, during the Depression, it wasn't going to help you at all. But the government would buy that gold from you. You're basically trading in your gold for, for cash. So that the government could provide cash. One of the stipulations was if you hoarded your gold, if you said, no, this is mine, sorry, I'm not going to sell it, I'm not going to trade it in, the government had the right to seize it. They can come knocking on your door and take your gold. The government had a right to arrest you. Say, so you were hoarding gold. And you're going to serve time in jail. That's what the president signed into order. Was that an appropriate use of executive power by the president? No. Why not? Because you need to speak up because that camera is for his You want to come stand in the blue one? No, I don't want to stand in the line. Okay. It was for his He wanted all the gold. The president wanted all the gold? For the government. But it's the people's gold. Okay. So the counter argument there would be that he's getting it for the government so the government can help the people. But the counter well, government doesn't need help. The people. Wasn't the cash pointless? I would argue that it would it'd be better to let the economy reset itself. But he took it too out. far by saying that you would put people in jail. That's, that's just, I agree with that. That's, that's I don't that's, so, the, so the order of, hey, trade in your gold, we're going to give you cash. Was the cash? Was okay. Cash the cash would, obviously cash goes back out. Getting cash into the economy. Gold doesn't flow in the economy. Okay, but there was this there was this law that says, you know, gold can't flow into the economy. But you need to have if you if you're giving out a million dollars in cash, you've got to have a million dollars in gold to support it. So if you're giving out billions of dollars in cash, you can't have a million dollars in gold to support it. You've got to have that billion. You've got to have the same amount. You've got to have money. You've got to have gold showing the value of that, that money. Okay? So, trading it in makes sense. The, God, the president's looking at it saying, okay, we need to create cash flow. We need to, we need to, we need to help the, the economy. We need to be able to say, hey, those, it just happened. Didn't it just happen? Didn't we just have that situation happen? Hey, the people need, need money. Let's give them money. Didn't that just happen? Okay. Well, think about it. the president back in 19... I don't, I don't know about... I don't know. It's just, that's, that's, that's not dangerous because like what, what they did over this the coronavirus thing, they put about $4 trillion into the economy, which... Not helping us. It, it, I understand it's the health, and okay, it helps in the short term, but that's just prolonging and pushing out what's going to happen. Like, well, gonna, that, that's how the Great Depression happens. It's going to put you guys in debt. Do you're, you're, it's going to put you, your generation in debt. It's, 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 it, that's how the Great Depression happened, is that there were kept being money put into the economy so it wouldn't take a dip. And it wouldn't take a downturn. 
and they just built up and then eventually just crashed because there was no you, you can't just keep making money and just putting it to the economy like that okay it doesn't you need to research the depression more okay has, has a lot more to do with a lot more than let's let's just give you know, money today giving out that money the, the, the view is we have this crisis and the crisis is now the crisis isn't going to last and the economy was doing amazing so in order to get over this crisis let's help get to the end of it and then so let's move on it works after when after after, after this crisis what uh, that I would say it's just like whenever the economy starts to take a downturn the government starts feeling they have to put money into the economy exactly so, money that's not but then, uh, I just okay. Well, that goes back to this mm -hmm. this law, okay, the the Federal Reserve Act that said you need to have this amount of gold in order to print this amount of money. Is is that still happening, or is the government just printing money? You know, because when they say we're in debt trillions of dollars, if you're in debt trillions of dollars, you don't have gold to back it up. If, if, you, we're if, you, ourselves. if you have all that gold, exactly. then you can, like, like if you have $30,000 in gold, and I ask to borrow $30,000, well now your $30,000 isn't worth anything anymore to you. It's $30,000 out here that if I give back to you, then your gold is still worth something. Right? It's, uh, all fine. it's all fine and dandy as long as people believe in the dollar and the, the dollar is still the reserve currency of the world. If that stays the same, then we're okay, I guess. Okay. But I would argue that we can't, we can't just be sitting on the teeter-totter like that going back and forth. Well, go back to 1933. Go back to 1933. So, submitting, if you, if you have gold and there's no cash flowing in the economy and the government says, hey, trade in your gold for cash. One, would you do it? No. Okay, you wouldn't do it. You know, Is it wasn't money during the Great Depression worthless? Because, because there's no economy. Because, there so was, their goal, because the government needed more money to get out, right? Yeah. But they couldn't still just stealing the vehicles. Okay. Well, so let me ask you this. If if there was no rule, if he didn't sign a rule that said, we're gonna seize it, we're gonna arrest you, you're gonna do jail time for hoarding your gold. Would would that have been an okay act? His If, if that was taken out of the equation, would it be okay for the, gov for the government to say, hey, trade in your gold for cash? They're still technically stealing the only thing you have to pay for stuff. But because cash was useless because there was no economy. You can't, but nobody accepted gold as payment for free. They did take. Cash was there. The value was way down. But value of a dollar. They hungry because they didn't have it. They didn't have anything. So they needed the money. So even if it wasn't, it, even they didn't buy a ton with it because it was, no, it was more than they had. Cash was not in, in the, was not in the system. Okay, guys, we've got so much more to do, and we're, we're like three minutes to close here. Okay, uh, Manhattan Project. You guys know what the Manhattan Project was? Yes, yes, sir. You do. It was it to build an atomic bomb? Yes, it was building the atomic bomb. And it was a race to build the atomic bomb. Very good. Okay, and it was an executive order to get into this race. Okay, 
they created this whole scientific research and development group. The government, the president said, let's create this branch, scientific research and development group, to create the atomic bomb. Okay? And from there, they went out to several different locations. Where did they actually create the bomb? Where did they finally, you guys know where that is? Los Alamos. Mexico. Los Alamos Laboratory. Okay. Uh, that's where it was actually designed. I think it was. Um, Mexico. Gotta be one of the southwestern states. Mexico. Texas. New Mexico. I bet it was New Mexico or Arizona. New Mexico or Mexico. Arizona or New Mexico. Arizona or New Mexico. Arizona or New Mexico. Who's needed testing over Okay. Southwest. That's where the atomic bomb was actually tested. There was old movies, have you ever seen these old movies? One really funny old movie is Mickey Rooney was in this um, movie and he was driving and got, came up to this city and was looking and got out of the car and was going into the city and going into the house and stuff like that and there's like nobody there and then there's dummies and stuff. And then they realized they were in where they were testing from you know, they, they were where they were going to bomb. And, and I think he climbed in a refrigerator, I'm not sure, I don't remember all. Yeah, I think I saw, I saw a clip of that. Crazy, crazy stuff, okay. Uh, do you think that was a good executive order to create this scientific lab yes. to yes. create yes. your town of bomb? Yes, I would say so. Yes. Because if not, then they would have been the only superpower. They would have been the only superpower in the world that did not have atomic bombs. Because right, well, Germany, no, Germany, Russia working on it, and Japan. We needed it to help defeat Japan. We were because we, we 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 making an invasion on Japan wasn't plausible. All right. Uh, there was one more video we were supposed to see, had to do with checks and balances, again. So, I'll put that on the... Uh, did you guys go on to the, our page, the class page? Did you see the videos and stuff like that? Did you see the links for them at least? I'll put a link for this other video. Uh, next week we'll talk more about the field trip. If you have any ideas as far as field trip are concerned, please let me know. Uh, when you get home, Send me your grades. If you don't send me your grades, I can't put them in the system. If I don't put them in the system, you don't get high school credit for this. Okay? So I need your grades. And I need them. Don't wait until week eight to send me all of your grades. Send me your grades. Say, I'm talking to you on camera. Send me your grades. Oh, <laughs> Send them to me so that I can get them in the system and so that you can actually keep track of where you are with your grades. Okay? Good job, everybody. Thank you for your input today. Thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for bringing in the documentation. We'll see you next week. Thank you, guys. Have a great week. Do you know how to shut this off? It doesn't need to be on now. Is there an on-off button? Here it is. I'm not going to touch it.